Welcome back to the Making the Madness Team preview series. Today we will be discussing the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The starting five for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights this season will be Geo Baker returning for a senior season at the one guard. At the two, you have Montez Mathis who started all of the games for Rutgers last season. At the three, Ron Harper Jr. who pound for pound I think is the best player on the team. At the four, Cliff Omori, local product, who's a top 60 recruit this year. And then Miles Johnson at the five. Yeah, look, looking at this team, I think the important piece for, the, for this team will be the backcourt. Geo Baker uh, really kind of struggled a little bit with inefficiency last year. Uh, was I, I'd say maybe even a little bit better of a player the previous season, but the thing about him is he, in the clutch time, he made every single play for Rutgers and was really the reason why uh, Rutgers was able to kind of sneak into what would have been the NCAA tournament last season. Yeah, definitely. Dio Baker, obviously been around for a while, dealt with some injuries last season, and I think overall, that kind of, you know, you look at his stat line, they're kind of like shot less than 40% from the field, shot 32% from deep. While that's not, you know, bad, when you watch him play, you think it's better. He hit that game winner against Northwestern. I think he had another game winner somewhere in there. He's a good player. He just needs to stay healthy and be consistent. Ron Harper Jr., elite defender, super versatile, and I just love everything he does. Yeah, the the game winner also came against Nebraska. So he single took handily took down the two worst teams in the Big Ten. Uh, but a game winner is a game winner. I think he also hit a big-time shot in that Purdue – road win that they got as well yeah uh geo baker just a great player um and then miles johnson he's a weird player he's a really talented player but man he cannot hit free throws either yeah uh i guess he's he's gone to the hassan french yudoka Zabuke school of free throw shooting but uh he's a <laughs> solid player uh can you know kind of what you need out of a glue guy five man can defend he can rebound block shots like that's what you need and then Omori the freshman who will kind of come in and start he's a, another really big body I look for Omori to be a five a five man in the future for this Rutgers team uh, but certainly he should I think come in he should start and that'll be a very physical and tough front court in the Big Ten yeah, the thing about Omori is that for the longest time, he was seen as an Arizona State, like, heavy lean, like, crystal ball-wise, like, 10 out of 10, but the one, or maybe, maybe it's 9 out of 9, it was, I don't know, it was somewhere like that, but the one thing, though, that, uh, uh oh, man, the, Cor not Corey Evans, him too, but the other one, it was a real, Evan Daniels, Evan Daniels had never put in a crystal ball for him until he put in the one for Rutgers, and if you know about Evan Daniels, you know when he puts one in, it's deal done, and he put one in that night before his commitment for Rutgers, and the deal was settled. Meanwhile, Ron Harper Jr., uh, son of the NBA legend Ron Harper, who played on the Bulls and the Lakers teams uh, that won NBA titles, he, Ron Harper Jr., May not win as many NBA titles, but certainly he's going to do really what good things for Rutgers this year. I think he's probably the favorite to lead them in scoring. Uh, he played all 31, started all 31 games a season ago. He's a really just good overall scorer. He can shoot the three. Uh, he can defend. He's He's a perfect mix for this team. See, Jonathan had to add something there to – like low key they're a little shade at me he he said harper started all 31 games and the reason he did that is because we were texting getting ready preparing for the episode here and he asked me besides montez mathis who started all 31 games for Rutgers, and i guess a quasi yaboa and uh kayla mcconnell and then i and then the answer is ron harper jr so i looked like an idiot but hey you got to go with the obvious pick, but... I did, I, I just forgot. I'm a Ron Harper guy. Ron Harper Jr. Ron, I, I like Ron Harper and Ron Harper Jr. They're, 
They're both studs. Neither of us saw Ron Harper Sr. play. Well, we we Live. we saw the Bulls Jordan documentary. That that's enough. I didn't. I never watched the Last Dance. That's that's disappointing. This is probably more of a podcast topic, but I did not ever watch the Last Dance. With that, we will move on to the reserve. Coming off the bench will be Jacob. I made Matt Harms transfer to BYU young. Paul McKehe, Mawat Mog, Dean Reber, and Oscar Palmquist. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you just speaking about Jacob Young, I mean, Matt Harms is seven foot three, and Jacob Young, he's listed at like six one. That's questionable. I don't know that he's actually six one, but man, he dunked all over Matt Harms like man. That that was the most impressive dunk by someone that has attended the University of Texas this this That's decade. That's true. Former Texas Longhorn. Former Texas Longhorn. Uh, long list of Longhorn greats that includes uh, P.J. Tucker at center, Kevin Durant, and now Jacob Young. Yeah, of course. And then uh, Cameron Ridley, one of the heftiest players in college basketball history that I can think of. That man was built yeah the de- texas great line of players and jacob young who is now on records adds to has adds his name to that list uh, based off that dunk yeah definitely and now speaking of another guard paul mulcahy is a player i love the talent level he's a guy who stepped in just a high energy guy and i'm not sure really what pe- what people uh in national circles think of him, but I don't feel like he's getting near enough national attention. He's a guy who likely won't start this season, but will play a six-man role 20, 25 minutes a game again. But he had 3.7 points a game, 2.5 rebounds, two assists. While those might not be eye-popping numbers by any stretch of the imagination, he shot 54% from the field, 33% from deep. And he's a six-six guy who can play the one. I mean, he did at points last season, and he looks very comfortable passing the ball he's just a good facilitator i like a lot of what mulcahy does he's a solid shooter i just think that he's a super high energy guy who can provide a spark off the bench if geo baker's struggling yeah and then obviously mawat mog uh that that's that's becoming one of my uh new favorite names uh at least in the freshman class uh he could provide some you know additional scoring he'll probably be the eighth man on this team but he could maybe play some four and help a little bit versatility wise with this team but overall i think yeah. one go past jacob young paul mckahey and mawat mog when talking about players that should make a big impact for this Rutgers team yeah the depth on this team isn't huge uh i mean it's solid guard depth for sure in terms of big man depth it's not great so I could see a world, honestly, where they just decide to go Cliff Amori on the bench and then start Mulcahy at the uh, – probably the three, right? Just put him at the three, put Montez Mathis at the two, Baker at the one, and then move Harper to the four and keep Johnson at the five. Steve Peichel has a couple different lineups he can adjust with this season, and that, you know, they should make the tournament this year. Yeah, and one thing we know about Steve Peichel, he's pounding nails. The key departures for the Scarlet Knights from last season will be Aquazi Yaboa, Shaq Carter, and Caleb McConnell, but there's a slight asterisk there. He is still with the program, but it was announced today that he will be medically redshirting this season just to get 100% healthy because he struggled with injuries last year and wants to be fully healthy before he plays again. And in a season like this, still with so much uncertainty, I certainly don't blame a player for wanting to redshirt and Essentially, you know, not opt out, I guess, but in a way, it's similar. Yeah, I, I think this the McConnell one kind of hurts. We knew Yaboa was kind of a one year, uh, come in, play the four for Rutgers, and kind of move on. But and he with, did a great job. Yes, he did a fantastic job, uh, obviously. But McConnell was kind of looked on, I think, probably to play the four this upcoming season for this team. Uh, being like a kind of undersized four man that can potentially stretch the floor and all that, uh, McConnell being not being there 
after kind of the team expecting him to be there, I think is a huge hit. But at the end of the day, I think Rutgers can fill in, but certainly from a depth perspective, that's not ideal. Yeah, it, I'm, I have a feeling this is probably brewing inside Rutgers circles for a while. So they've been practicing as if Caleb McConnell was not in the team this year. And, I mean, it sucks. McConnell's a talented player. He's six foot seven, versatile. But this team does have a lot of guard depth. He's not a big man. He can play the wing, but he's not really a four or five guy at all. So, in a, in a sense, it makes it makes a lot it, it makes a lot of sense for him to redshirt this year. You know, with Mulcahy and Young at the guard spot off the bench and wanting to be fully healthy, this season's not going to be normal. It's just it makes sense. Yeah. And then, as for Shaq Carter, he's kind of another piece to the puzzle. Uh, not a huge loss with him, but certainly depth never hurts when it comes to college basketball. And he's someone that could play a few minutes, uh, probably like a 15-minute per game guy, but sometimes you need those guys. Yeah, Shaq Carter, you know, 12 minutes a game last season, a big guy. Uh, I mean, honestly, they could use his depth this season, but he has graduated, so he will not be back this year. Moving on, uh, what to expect from this team? Uh, the first question is, do they make the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1991? I think the obvious answer is yes. Uh, they would have made the tournament last season. They're going to make the NCAA tournament this season. Geo Baker coming back. Being healthy for a full season will obviously be a huge help. Ron Harper Jr. Uh, as well, he's a you know really great player. He's I think going to emerge as being you know a potential top five ten player in the Big Ten. Maybe they have two All Big Ten level players with Baker with Ron Harper Jr. and then obviously the depth up at the guard spot along with Amore and Johnson inside. I just don't see any way they miss the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I mean, it's not even just how that this team's good, the continuity with the team, but you look at the opportunities they'll have within their conference. This is a stacked conference. You have Illinois, who I'm very high on. You have Wisconsin. You have Michigan State. You have Iowa. You have Ohio State. You have Michigan. You have uh, Penn State. You have Purdue. Those are all good teams. I might have missed someone somewhere in there, but those are all really good teams, and they will have plenty of opportunity to get some quality wins this season. Yeah, definitely. And then the second question is, assuming they make the NCAA tournament, can they make a deep run in the tournament? I, I think maybe like a second weekend, maybe an Elite Eight it would be uh, high expectations, but do you think they can make a run in the tournament? second weekend can they can they make the sweet 16 i'm gonna say yes i think they can make the sweet 16 i don't think they can go further than that but hey this is a team that hasn't been to the tournament in 29 years if they can win if they can just get in that's huge but if they can win even one game that's huge this is this is what happens when you start winning games you start making the tournament it's called program momentum. I mean, just winning games is going to entice recruits to want to go there. You look at Bobby Hurley at Arizona State. That's a school that didn't make the tournament for a decade, and now making it two seasons in a row that had NCAA tournaments. And he now has Joshua Christopher and Marcus Bagley. You just have to win, and these young guys will want to come and play. Yeah, and they, they already are recruiting at a high level. Cliff Amori, uh, Mawag Mog, just elite group of recruits coming in and certainly not only can this team be a tournament team this season make a potential run I think this is going forward I uh, expect to see the Scarlet Knights consistently competing for an NCAA tournament 